Really? I'm on the ground, dude. I know. Here's some newly released raw body cam footage showing police officers in Sterling, Colorado, pulling a man out of his doorway, hogtying him, and leaving him hogtied for around 16 minutes. Is it constitutional for police officers to hogtie someone under these circumstances? Is it constitutional for police to hogtie someone under any circumstances? Watch the footage, and I just may have some information about that, but I've researched the federal case law there, and the results may surprise you. Also, don't forget that time learning about constitutional rights is time well spent, so make sure to subscribe both here and at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. October 9th, 2020, Sterling Police Officer Paul McDaniel pulled Christian Wetzel from his apartment and threw him to the ground. With the assistance of Sterling Police Officer Matt Williams and Logan County Sheriff's Deputy Alton McGuffin, the three police officers hogtied Mr. Wetzel with his hands handcuffed behind his back, his ankles strapped together, and his ankles and wrists themselves tied together behind his back. They drug him to a police cruiser, threw him into the rear seat, and then left him in that position until he was finally released at the jail approximately 16 minutes later. There was a verbal argument between Mr. Wetzel and his wife, Brittany Wetzel. Mr. Wetzel was not ultimately arrested or charged with any criminal offense related to a domestic dispute that day. The police officers had been called to the scene following a call from a neighbor, of course, of a possible domestic dispute due to hearing loud voices. Alrighty. Wasn't you involved? No. Alrighty. Is that the vehicle though? I don't know. After the officers arrived at the apartment, they could not hear anyone yelling inside the apartment. They did not observe any altercation taking place or any crimes at all being committed. Officer McDaniel asked Brittany Wetzel what was going on and she just stated, just an argument. She didn't appear to have any injuries. She did not request their assistance. She had not called them to the scene at all. Mr. Wetzel then walks up into the doorway from inside the apartment. He did not step outside the threshold of the apartment door. He asked Officer McDaniel, what's up, man, in a calm, non-threatening, and non-aggressive manner. Officer McDaniel asked Mr. Wetzel to, quote, come here and talk to me, man. Mr. Wetzel, in a calm, non-threatening, and non-aggressive manner, stated, I'm cool, indicated that, indicating that he wanted to stay inside the doorway of his apartment to talk to them and not leave the apartment. Who all is inside? What's up, man? Come out here and talk to me, man. No, I'm cool. Well, come out here and talk to me. I'm cool. Okay, then come out here and talk to me. No, I'm cool. Come out here and talk to me, dude. Hey, do don't do touch not me, pull man. away from me. Don't. He can be seen making no sudden moves. He did not threaten the officers in any way. Mr. Wetzel did not appear to be armed. Nor did the officers appear to have any information or any indication that Mr. Wetzel was armed. Mr. Wetzel was ultimately hogtied for approximately 16 minutes. All right. You going to be cool? Everybody got that on camera real quick? I didn't say anything. Or resist. You approach me, man. Look at all that videos, man. Really? I'm on the ground, dude. I know. What's wrong with you? I didn't even fight. Let me see your camera, dude. Hey. You really? You don't make the rules. Ah. I ain't even doing nothing. Let go of yourself. Yes. God, what are you doing, dude? Ah! Bend your legs. Hey! There you go. Hey! Hey! Quit! You quit. I ain't doing right. nothing, man. Hey! 
I'm gonna hold it here until I get my car. Eighteen will have a male in custody. I don't like you guys for a reason you treat me like that. I didn't even do nothing to y'all. Ready? Ready? Yep. Please get off me, dude. One, two, three. Ah! Dude, I ain't resisting. Let me walk. Get up. Videotape this shit, man. Get off me. Well, if we did that, we dropped you. Ah! Hey! What's wrong with you, man? And there was no indication that any domestic related crime had been committed that day at all. There were no charges pertaining to the underlying call which the officers had arrived to investigate. Now, however, Mr. Wetzel was charged with disorderly conduct, resisting arrest, and obstructing. All the charges were subsequently dismissed by Logan County Court Judge Ray Ann Brammer. A lawsuit was filed just a few days ago in state court in Colorado over these allegations. I'll post it up to the blog at the link in the description. As for the facts, based on the body cam footage and the facts presented in the media reports and the civil lawsuit, constitutional rights were indeed violated. Why? Although the officers were called to the scene of a reported domestic dispute, they ended up acting on a very small amount of information that, even if true, does not justify the arrest of the homeowner, much less a use of force against him, much less a hog tying of him. A neighbor had called 911, reporting a suspected verbal argument. There was apparently no allegation of any crime being committed or that anyone's physical safety was in jeopardy. When officers arrived at the scene, they saw no crime being committed. They located and observed both spouses at the residence. Neither appeared to be in distress or requested their assistance. Without Mrs. Wetzel requesting their assistance, under these circumstances, the officers had no justification for pulling Mr. Wetzel out of his house. That's a Fourth Amendment violation right there. But even assuming that they acted properly up to that point, which they didn't, then we have the arrestee being hogtied on the ground, which is, of course, the purpose of, the, of this video. Now, Colorado is in the 10th Federal Circuit. A quick search of the case law shows that police officers hogtying anyone is a terrible idea under almost any fact pattern. It could theoretically be reasonable under some circumstances, but I really don't even know what that would be. It certainly would not be reasonable under this fact pattern, where the arrestee had not committed any crime at all, much less a severe crime. Watching the body cam footage shows that the arrestee is not attempting to harm the officers in any way, and that he poses no threat to them. No uh, reasonable one, anyways. Rather, it appears that the officers hogtied the man in retaliation for not immediately respecting their authority by stepping out of his house when they asked him to do so, despite the fact that they had no legal justification to demand that. that. This appears to be one of those common situations where the police are going to just teach a lesson about respecting the police. It's clearly not about the safety of anyone at the scene, including the arrestee. There's a Tenth Circuit case, Weigel v. Broad, from 2008, that discusses hog tying, making it clear that the courts consider it akin to the use of deadly force, as it poses a very high danger of positional asphyxiation. I'll put all the legal citations in the blog post on this, which you'll find in the description. Now, the Weigel case also cites another Tenth Circuit case from 2001, Cruz v. City of Laramie, which is relevant here. In the cruise, Wyoming police officers responded to a complaint of a naked man running on the exterior landing of an apartment building. Now, when the officers arrived, Mr. Cruz, the man on the landing, was jumping up and down, kicking his legs in the air. When he descended from the landing, the officers wrestled him to the ground and handcuffed him. Then they hogtied him. Shortly after that, Mr. Cruz's face um, blanched. Then he was rushed to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. Expert reports indicated that Mr. Cruz's death resulted from positional asphyxiation. Citing Cruz, the 2008 Weigel opinion denied those police officers qualified immunity for similar conduct, issuing a clear warning to law enforcement to think twice about hogtying arrestees. As a result of this, the Wyoming State Police, as I understand it, prohibited the practice for their officers. 
Back in the 90s, the DOJ also warned against the cruel practice. I also set up a Rumble account. There are a lot of other hog tying cases out there as well, but I gave you the Tenth Circuit case law as that is applicable to this particular jurisdiction. As always, thanks for watching. You can find more detailed information on this at the blog post linked in the description at thecivilrightslawyer.com. I want to thank you for bringing me well over the 100,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And make sure to uh, also click the bell notification, of course, so that YouTube doesn't get to des decide when, when you see my video. Um, also, I set up a Rumble account. So make sure to subscribe over there. It's also called the Civil Rights Lawyer channel, just in case as you've seen some of the crazy stuff that's been going on. And I'll probably also start uploading some of the more graphic law enforcement videos, excessive force type stuff over there because YouTube gives me a really difficult time with them. They'll restrict just about anything these days that isn't specifically designed for PBS or something. Also on Facebook, you can watch most of these same videos at my page there titled John H. Bryan, Attorney at Law. And they've actually been a lot better as far as not restricting or censoring ridiculous stuff over there. You can also find me on Twitter, the same name, the Civil Rights Lawyer, specifically at John Bryan ESQ. Thanks. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it. I'll see you next time.